Kathy. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so excited to have you today. For those of you that don't know me, I am Torin Darling Brazel, the founder and executive director of Ignite. Ignite is simply a bridge that we've created. A group of us got together, decided to be the change that we needed to see and said, you know what? Not another day, not another second, not another hour. Are we going to allow to go by without being intentional and doing everything we can to make sure minorities, especially Black men, women, youth, families, are aware of all of the amazing opportunities and resources that are available to help us. Um, with that being said, today we have another masterclass with none other than Demetrius Curry. But before I turn it over to her, I want to say, if you're on here, what I need you to do right now is I need for you to begin to uh, share this on your pages get some other people in the room. One of the things that you can do is join us in this movement where you yourself say, you know what? I'm gonna make sure that my friends, my family, my colleagues, my Facebook friends, everybody is aware and privy to this information as well. So before we go any further, that's what I need y'all to do. I need y'all to begin to share this, get some other people over here on this live, because I am telling you, we are winning on purpose. If you are connected to Ignite, you are winning on purpose because showing up is half the battle. While we're waiting to get some people in the room, a few things that I need to tell you is that number one, have you heard? Are you a restaurant owner? Are you a caterer? Are you in the food industry? Because if so, I need you to listen up and I need you to make sure you get those people over here so they can hear this as well. The SBA has released a grant opportunity. We don't know when they're going to officially drop it, but you know, over here at Ignite, we got the hookup. So we have pulled together a team to help you, number one, we're gonna show you how to do the application yourself. And then if you're like me, and in some instances, I just don't wanna use my brain cells for stuff like that. So it's like, you know what, who can do this for me? We also have somebody that you can actually pay to do that for you if that's easier for you. But listen, we believe in teaching you how to fish. So there's nothing that we don't know that we're not going to tell you, that we're not going to show you how to do it. And then we'll give you those options. So if you have somebody that, you know, you know what? No, I don't want to do this. We have somebody that you can contract and pay to do it for you. But the, the bottom line is no businesses left behind none whatsoever. If you are in the Five Points West community, Bush Hills, Inslee, if you're over on Lom Avenue, all up and down the Bessemer Superhighway from Ellington Village, for those of y'all from the Birmingham area, all the way down to Midfield, guess what? Our eye is on you. The Five Points West Crossplex Business Alliance called us, asked us, to step in and to help them. And we are about to launch No Business Left Behind where we are putting all hands on deck to come and to help give the business owners over there some uh, much needed assistance and relief. If you're a business owner anywhere in the city of Alabama, did you know, or a city of Birmingham, did you know that there is what's called a facade grant so that means that if you have a storefront and you need to get a sign, you need to get some painting done on the outside, you need to get some things done to help beautify your space, guess what? There's a grant. Y'all know grants, that's free money, right? Y'all did know that. It's free money. It's available for you. And we have the plug, you know, we connect it. So we have a team that's going to help you do that too. So I'm just trying to say, I'm just trying to understand, are you registered with doing business in Alabama yet? Because if you're not, it sounds like to me, you need to be heading right on over to www.ignite.com. 
A L dot O R G. Again, that is www dot ignite A L dot O R G and register for the free doing business in Alabama project. Now it's free to you. It's not free to us. Guys, what you're getting, literally, if we had to pay for everything, this is like a $4 million project. Yes, thank you to our friends at the W.K. Kellogg Foundation for giving us a $600,000 seed grant to serve you over the next three years. Thank you so much to our partners with the University of Alabama and Alabama Power and Babson College that are working with us to help count us for the next five years. Thank you so much to amazing professionals like Demetrius Curry, who I'm about to turn it over to her right now, that has literally given of herself, of her time, of her talent to help us make sure that you what? Win on purpose. So listen, I'm trying to see how many people we got on because I need y'all to get some people in the room. I need to make sure that we are intentional about helping each other, about supporting each other. Y'all, we got to do this. Nobody's going to save us, but we can save ourselves. My grandma used to tell me all the time, God bless the child that has her own. God bless the child that has his own. And we, your family here at Ignite is here to tell you that you don't have to do it alone, but we will help you so that you can have your own and not just for you, but for your whole bloodline. This is some legacy building stuff we got going on over here. We not playing. I don't know what you heard, but we not playing. We real serious over here. And that's the reason why I love Demetrius and what she's been sharing with us. Have y'all been watching her? Have you been going back and catching the replays? If not, I need you to do that. She has been with us faithfully every single Thursday since April the 1st. So if you didn't catch it, you need to go back. Look at her uh, video on April the 1st, April the 8th, April the 15th. Every single week, she dropped some destiny shaking, wealth building strategies for you. And I all the only thing that's standing in between you and greatness is you. So if that song says, move, get out the way, get out the way, get out the way, now move. <laughs> All right. And now I'm about to move and get Demetrius <laughs> right on here so she can do her thing. Y'all have a great day. Get over to www.igniteal.org and connect, register with Doing Business in Alabama and make sure that you continue to share this. Get some more people on the line right now and make sure that you take notes. I don't know about you, but I keep a notepad. I keep an ink pen. I need you to be prepared and in expectancy to get everything that she's about to drop. So thank you so much. Without further ado, Demetrius Curry. Woo, Miss Torin, I don't know if I can come, come after that. I just don't know. <laughs> thank you so very much for just the opportunity to work with Ignite in Alabama and to work with you directly. It's just been absolutely amazing, amazing at that. And you're right, no business left behind is what we're trying to make sure that we are able to get done and to establish, right? And one of the things that I love so much is that we're able to work together in doing this. This is something that we are having to make sure that we are able to move together, okay? And you need to make sure that this is something that you are really, really wanting for your business, that you want to move forward. You, know, you need to make sure that this is something that is important to you. Um, and one of the things that Torn brought to us when we first started looking at this is she said, hey, I want to make sure that we help who wants to be helped. And that's why we're here. And that's why we're here. And so if you have missed the first three weeks 
of this month long segment of doing business in Alabama, I need you to go back, like Torn said a little bit earlier, I need you to go back and recap what you have missed. We talked about term versus permanent insurance on yourself and your business. We also talked about key man policies and how you can use a key man policy in your business to secure your future, to leverage yourself, to be able to bring in new blood and new talent to your business. So we want to make sure we cover that. Don't miss that segment, okay? Last week, we talked about securing collateral-based loans, commercial loans, when you need to actually get what? Some land for your property. Possibly you want to buy a new location, expand your current location. Maybe you want to do some reconstruction of your current location. All of that was in there. And we had the, the uh, ability to work with so many people on bringing that information. We had Jason Norris as one of our guest speakers and as a private investment mortgage group uh, guru, he came in and laid down some serious nuggets of what you need to know to get that commercial loan ready, to be ready to walk through the door with your documents in hand. He just really laid out some really great information and we were able to communicate that with you last week. If you missed that, please make sure you go back and listen to that segment. You can also see those segments on Ignite Facebook page and on our YouTube channel, a Demetrius Curry, okay? Very important, guys, that we talk about what is next in your business. What is next in your business and what are you hoping to do? This week, we are talking about employee benefits at no cost to the employer. Let me say that again. Employee benefits at no cost to the employer. Now, side note, that means that the employees are able to get benefits at a deeply discounted rate. Why? Because they are going through their business, their employer, you're going through that to be able to get those discounts. So we're gonna jump right in on that. Next week, we are hitting the top of the mountains with infinite banking. So if you have not been putting this on your schedule, hey, make sure you do it. Make sure you do it. We got to make sure that you are here. We want you here with us. It's going to be important. And I want to make sure you guys know that we're serious about helping you run your business and to make sure you are profitable in doing so. Disclaimers. Let's look at this real quick as a disclaimer. We want to make sure that if we answer any questions for you on these platforms, that you realize that we are live on social media. If there's anything that you do not want shared on social media, please make sure that you talk to your staff, talk to your management, possibly talk to your business partners, and let's do a collaborative meeting, schedule a meeting with you separately outside of social media. Reason why that is, is because we have to make sure we stay within privacy guidelines and HIPAA guidelines and making sure that we answer your questions, but we don't want everyone in your personal affairs, okay? So please be aware of that. Right here on this particular link is my Calendly link specifically for Ignite. We will make sure we put that on the post as well for you to designate some time with me. If that's really important, you have some questions for me, we can definitely do that as well. Also, here is my 800 number where you'll be able to reach me or someone in our staff and to go ahead and schedule some time with us as well, okay? So let's talk about employee benefits. What does it mean? And is it something that is important to you in your business? Would it benefit your staff to have it, okay? Will it benefit your staff? And what does it make a big difference for you as an employer? What's the benefit of offering benefits to your staff? Is it just to have, or is there something underlining benefits that you weren't aware of that you can be tapping into as an employer? We're gonna talk about that today, okay? The psychology behind why offering employee benefits. Number one, you're attracting much needed talent in your business. Okay, 
you know, one of the things that, you know, when people are looking for a business opportunity or they're looking for a career change, they're looking for areas that they can bring their talent to, but they can also have some benefits that will help them keep their bottom line dollar, cash money, health wise, you know, insurance, they want to make sure that their bottom line is also maximizing. Okay. So this is one reason you want to make sure that you are able to offer some benefits to some of the most talented employees that you have, because truth be told, let's just be real about this. Okay. If you have a wonderful business and you have a competitor across the road or across town, that does similar products, services like you do, but maybe they're not as good as you, but they offer benefits, okay? They offer benefits. And so the employee who's looking for an opportunity is like, wow, I would love to work here, but I really do need that insurance or I really do need that coverage. It knocks out you as an opportunity to actually be able to bring in that wonderful talent that you could have had just by having something extra for them, an extra perk for them. Minimize employee turnaround. That goes hand in hand with your, your longevity of your employees staying with you. You know, when you have benefits into your staff, most time they wanna stay with you longer. They wanna stay with you longer. Keep your healthy workforce. Who wants a workforce that's always sick? And what happens in that, and it's not just always sick, but it's also your productivity is being stagnant because your talent that you need there is not there, okay? Now, what does that mean for your business? That means slowing down of your business. That means possibly losing contracts and sales that you could have had, but you didn't have the right staff or the ample staff in hand. It's so many different ways that having a healthy workforce and having those abilities to have a healthy workforce helps you as an employer to keep them on the sales floor when you need them most, okay? When you need them most. Boost employee productivity. Now we talked about that as well. They will actually be more productive. You know, they feel like the relationship between them and the employer is better. You know, they love who they work with. When you have someone that enjoys who they work with and feels like you're looking out for their best interests, what happens is, is that they're willing to do more go beyond what they're getting paid for, go to the next level of making sure that you are getting the profits that you're supposed to get in your business, right? So these are all some of the things, keeping the morale high are all wonderful things to making sure that your employees want to stay with you and don't go to a competitor, okay? So those are just some of the things to talk about. What are the most common benefits to offer your staff? We have medical insurance, dental, vision, sick leave, of course, vacation time, even parental leave. Retirement plans are also wonderful to put in there because everyone wants to retire at some point, right? So financial wellness programs, even commuter benefits. Sometimes people pay for their travel and their mileage, right? Pet insurance is also included. Did you know pet insurance is a huge benefit these days? I'm, we get a lot of questions about pet insurance. You, I'm not even going to tell you about how much I spend on my pets. It's ridiculous. But, <laughs> but in saying that, pet insurance is one of those things that become more and more requested uh, across the board in corporations and small business. Child care, disability insurance. Yes, we're going to talk in depth about the disability insurance, life insurance, tuition reimbursement. Now, I can tell you this firsthand. When I worked in the banking industry for 25 years, I absolutely loved the tuition reimbursement program because I was going to school, going to get my business degree and my finance degree. And what? I was actually working hour for hour for hour, right? What did that mean? That means the money that I was already making, 
I wanted to use that and needed to use that for my daily living, right? My daily living. So that tuition reimbursement program was absolutely amazing. Gym memberships are also another sought after request as people get to you know, learn how they want to get their health right. They want to change, you know, maybe get their, their bodies back in shape. Gym memberships is just an added perk, definitely an added perk. So let's talk about what benefits are and how you can manipulate it to put it into your business to help you in so many different areas, okay? Have you ever heard of the Section 125 cafeteria plan, okay? This and this. When you offer pre-tax benefits into your business, there are benefits for you as an employer and tax breaks. Listen to me, small business owners, large business owners, no matter what size you are, if you have a minimum of three people, count that, one, two, three, one, two, three. If you have a minimum of three people under your tax ID number, okay? you are eligible to be able to offer some tax, pre-tax benefits to your staff and reap the benefits of getting tax breaks because you are the employer, okay? I wanted to emphasize that because a lot of times our businesses, especially our small businesses, we think that we can't offer benefits because we're not large enough. That's not true. You can offer benefits to your staff with a minimum of three people under that tax ID number, whether it is a uh, 1099 or a W-2 tax company, you can still do that. There's different ways to work that program, but it is open for you. OK, we're going to talk more in detail about that as well as we jump a little bit further. OK, helping employees save money is simple. OK, you can also use flexible spending accounts within your cafeteria plan. Now, what I want to emphasize is this. OK, there are numerous carriers out there that will allow you to have a cafeteria plan that they manage for you for free. Yes, for free. They can manage your 10, your, your cafeteria plan for you, your 125 cafeteria plan for free. Okay. There are plans out there that will allow that. And then depending on the size of your business, even if they had to charge something due to your size, it's at a small minimum amount. Okay, so I want to make sure that we first knock out that question. I don't think I can offer benefits. I'm not large enough. You may be large enough with just three people under that tax ID number. So we want to make sure that you get that. These are real nuggets, y'all, that you can use in your business. If you are looking to offer tax benefits to yourself as an employer and benefits to your, to your staff, for health purposes, truly important that you know that you have the ability to do that, okay? Let's look at these pre-tax benefits, pre-tax benefits. Now, in the pre-tax benefits, we already know that you can have your flexible skinning account. We know that. We know that you can have a health savings account, right? All of those are parts of you putting monies away out of your paycheck before, before, your check is taxed. That's what pre-tax means. It means that the deduction is coming out of the employee's payroll before taxes are applied to the income, okay? And that's really important to note because what does that do for you? That means that you're, you're really creating your own discount within because you're able to get that pre-tax in there. So important, so important. Let's look at other areas, dental, vision, hospital, critical care, oh, accident. All these areas are insurance pre-tax coverages. Starting on the vision, right? Let's start on this vision. Eye exams, 
contacts, eyeglasses, even progressive lenses you can actually buy with a vision insurance. And what we're talking about right here is a supplemental insurance. Now, you have major medical vision and you have supplemental vision, okay? For the, for the purposes of our training today, we're talking about supplemental insurance. And the reason why we're doing that is because we want to allow you the opportunity to see that you can offer these benefits to your staff without having to pay for it as an employer. And this is one of the ways that you can do it without having to pay out every single month for offering to your staff. So important. So we're talking about supplemental vision right here. Scratch resistant ultraviolet coating, okay? Frames, contact lenses, all those things are offered and covered in your vision insurance. Now, what does supplemental mean? Before we go further, supplemental means that it is not a major medical coverage on a vision insurance. What it does is this. If you have, if you have an eye exam, possibly you have to go to the eye doctor, you need to find out if you, you have cataracts, for example, just making that example, right? If that is the case, right, the vision insurance is sort of what we call like a bridge insurance, a bridge insurance to help you with the extra expenses of having that exam, right? Of having to pay for your lenses or having to have eye treatments of some sort. Very important. Now, now keep in mind that vision insurance is one of those things that I know personally, I haven't been using a lot. I haven't been using it a lot. I need to, but one of the things it does do is that it helps you with preventive things as well. Did you know if you are a diabetic, that vision insurance is massively important, right? So if you are a diabetic, making sure that you have that coverage. High blood pressure is another ailment that requires that you have some good vision insurance, right? To look at and to help you with anything that comes near you, especially if you're not sure if your eyes are working properly, or maybe you got some blurred vision here and there. We need to make sure that you get some vision insurance. And, and this is one way to make sure that your staff has access to vision insurance, okay? What can I expect with supplemental dental, right? Supplemental dental. What does that mean? Fill-ins, emergency care, simple and surgery extractions, crowns, inlays, bridges, dentures even, is covered on simple supplemental dental coverages, right? How about oral surgeries, right? I recall when I had all my wisdom teeth taken out at one time. Oh, goodness, what a surgery that was, right? I was down for days, right? But having a supplemental dental coverage helped aid in the cost of what it cost me to get all my wisdom teeth extracted, okay? Routine exams, cleanings as well, x-rays. Every year, sometimes twice a year, you may need an x-ray of your teeth, okay? Sometimes it's a full mouth x-ray, sometimes it's not. And when it comes to the children, as they're losing their baby teeth and they're going into uh, adult teeth, they may need something like sealants or fluoride treatments, things of that nature, space retainers. I know, I have a 12 year old, we've been through that. <laughs> so these are some of the areas that your employees could have coverage in if they decided to opt for the dental coverage. Now. We're going to talk about pricing on this stuff at the end and, and what kind of pricing we're talking about. Because I know in your mind, you're thinking, oh, well, how much does all this cost? Well, we're going to talk about the average cost of all of these at the very end of this. So stay tuned, stay with us, okay? Benefits of hospital indemnity insurance, okay? Guess what? No deductibles, no co-pays, right? pays regardless of what other major coverage you have. So if you have United Healthcare, Blue Cross Blue Shield, whatever it is, when you have a supplemental hospital insurance, it doesn't matter what other coverages you have in place. It will actually accommodate any other major coverages you have in place. Let's say that you don't have any major medical in place. Guess what? You can still get this as a standalone hospital insurance plan. Okay, pays upon admissions to the hospital. This particular policy 
is customizable. I've seen so many of them across the board and we are partners with a lot of these companies, okay? But one of the things I noticed is that it is customizable based off of your need. So if you wanted to have the policy pay you $1,000, day one, you're going into the hospital. Let's say you wanted to pay $2,000 of you, you going into the hospital. You can actually choose which particular plan underneath this umbrella that will pay you $500, $1,000, $1,500, $2,000 the day that you go into the hospital. And each day that you are there, it has a per day payout as you are there, right? So even if you had to have surgery, it also includes surgery benefits. Some of these particular carriers require that you add that on as a rider. Others have it built into the basic coverage, okay? So there is an option there. There is an option there. Emergency room benefits are also included in that, right? Critical illness, what does it mean? What does it mean to have a critical illness coverage, okay? Commonly known as the heart attack stroke plan, critical illness can mean a vast variety of things. It can be heart attack, stroke, renal failure. Organ transplants are also included in critical illness. Now, if you know like I know, when you have something like a heart attack or a stroke, just for example, just that one incident, it doesn't stop there. You have to continue to go back for follow-ups, treatments, to find out how you're progressing. And in some cases, you may need therapy, okay? Some therapies may be physical therapy. Some may be speech therapy, okay? Because if you have something like a stroke, for instance, you may need some speech therapy or something like that to help you get back to your normal way of speaking, right? Okay. And in some cases, you may not get back to your normal case, but having those treatments and those therapies there is part of this type of coverage. Okay. I wanted to emphasize one thing here on this particular coverage is do you realize that the average cost of a heart attack is over $87,000, okay? That is huge for someone that is working paycheck to paycheck. How in the world can you afford to pay the cost of $87,000 average cost? It could be higher than that, depending on the situation. But how can you afford that, right? You can't. You can't, you're talking about tapping out your credit cards and tapping out your savings and tapping out all those things that you work so hard for, your retirements, to be able to accommodate a critical emergency that you were not prepared for, right? So as an employer, as an employer, keep in mind that if something was to happen to someone on your staff in one of these type illnesses, not only do it take them off the floor, from producing for you, right? But it also puts them in a very bad financial situation where all they can do is try to recover and figure out how to do it with the medical bills, right? So it is a great benefit for you as an employer to offer your employees something of this sort, right? Let's talk about the accident insurance coverage. The accident insurance coverage is probably one of my favorite coverages and I'll tell you why in a minute because you can actually use it for a variety of different accidents. Most people think of motor vehicle accidents, maybe fall injuries, but it also includes organized sports. It also includes organized sports, okay? So for instance, many, many years ago when my son was four years old, we had a policy of this sort. He was playing football. Now, you know, me and mom, I'm, I'm mom now. I don't want him getting hurt on the football field. <laughs> but he ended up having a small concussion from a child hitting him improperly. What did we do? We were able to send him to the doctor, got him to the emergency room, got him in there to see, found out what was going on with him, right? 
And I knew something was wrong by the way he was looking, right? Knew something was wrong, right? But this coverage here helped us with his treatments, when his initial diagnosis of the concussion, all of that was part of this accident coverage, which includes organized sports for children, okay? So that's also something to be considered and think about that. If you have staff that have kids that are playing sports of some kind, right? Baseball, football, basketball, you know, regardless of what they're playing, if you say to your bit, to your employees, hey, I'm going to offer this accident coverage and it's going to also cover kids for organized sports. Do you want to offer it for your, for your child? Do you want to go ahead and sign your kid up for it? They're going to say, oh, yeah, I think I need to get him on that because he plays football. He plays basketball. And as we get past you know, sports starting back up and, and things like that nature, it's a good opportunity to have them fit that in, right? This particular type of policy is not expensive. So we're going to talk about that as well, okay? When I hit you with the amounts of what these coverages really normally charge, you're going to be like, you crazy. <laughs> it's there. It's definitely there. Now, on the accident coverage, I'm going to share something with you that I thought you should probably know. Many years ago, in 2007, I was hit by a drunk driver, okay? Hit by a drunk driver, and in doing so, she T-boned my car. She T-boned my car, and I broke my femur bone, which is my thigh bone, and also my wrist on the left side of my body. I also developed a pinched nerve, right? between my C6 and C7 vertebrae. I'm being transparent here now, guys, okay? Now, that accident coverage, what did it do? It paid for my ambulance cost. It also paid for the time that I was in the hospital, all right? Even the therapy treatments that I had for five weeks, four days a week, it paid me $200 a day for every therapy treatment that I had, right? And then in addition to that, it also helped me with my rehab cost and everything. So by the end of the time of doing this particular accident that I was not expecting, okay, hey, it helped me what? Pay for things that was really needed for me at the time. Now, at that time, I was working in banking. I only had seven days of, of leave. I had to be out of work for much longer than that. What did that mean? That mean that extra coverage? also helped me pay my bills. Yes, it helped me pay my rent. It helped me pay for my groceries. All of that was used with this accident coverage. And at that time, I only paid for just coverage for me at that time. So let's say we're talking about $7, $8 a week is what I was paying for for that particular coverage. I told you it was not expensive. So it, it gave me an option, guys. And that's why I want to talk to uh, the employers today to let you know that there is a benefit to you offering it to your staff and the cost is reasonable. It's the same cost that they would typically do at McDonald's or at Starbucks every single week. Okay, let's talk about post-tax benefits. Now, let's, let's draw back just for a second. Remember, we were saying that as an employer, you get tax breaks for offering pre-tax benefits that included the accident coverage, the vision, the dental, the accident, the cancer, all of that is included in it, right? Okay. Post-tax benefits are areas that are taken from your check after taxes, okay? So after taxes have been applied to your check, post-tax benefits are also there to allow you to get those particular type of benefits, okay? Now, before we jump into the uh, post-tax, let's try to go ahead and cover the cancer treatments because this is one area that's really, really um, dear to my heart. I say it's very dear to my heart because my, my dad is currently fighting cancer. And so I wanted to make sure that we covered this in detail. Cancer treatments includes chemo, radiation, 
lump sum initial diagnosis, right? Stem cell transplants, surgeries, even your per day expenses of being hospitalized, okay? Home health care. That means once you're released to come back home, you may need some nursing care to come in, maybe a hospice care to come in and to assist you. That's also included in the cancer treatments and preventive coverages, okay? Breast reconstruction. Now, not all carriers will offer the breast reconstruction. If you are a person that has breast cancer and they're having to go in and, and have surgery and then you wanna go through the reconstruction to sort of like put your structure back together, then some carriers do offer that breast reconstruction as part of the cancer treatment, okay? So definitely want to make sure that you are aware of that. Uh, depends on which particular carrier it is, then they can give that treatment. And then also ambulance costs. Ambulance costs is built in to really to all of these with the exception of maybe dental and vision, okay? So you will see that it also covers uh, the critical care, it has ambulance costs built into that. Cancer care also has ambulance costs built into that as well. And so even the accident, we talked about that. It's also included in that one as well, okay? Egg harvesting on the cancer. Now, what is egg harvesting and what does it mean? Let's just say that you are a young lady that is still in your prime years of having children, but you need to go under radiation and you need to also go under chemo. Well, what they can do is they can harvest your healthy eggs and put it away for you, okay? And then once your cancer treatments are over, they can put your eggs back in. Isn't that amazing? Oh, yes. I'm telling you, I had a couple of clients that actually had to go through that process that were very afraid of not being able to have children in the future because they were in their young 20s having to have chemo and radiation. So believe it or not, this is a real thing that women go through of trying to make sure that they have healthy eggs one day to have children. Okay. So that's part of it. Second opinion pay. So let's say that you have a diagnosis from a physician and the physician says, well, you have this form of cancer, colon cancer, whatever it may be. And you want a second opinion. You, you, don't, you don't believe that doctor. You want to make sure you get a second opinion. Or you just maybe you just want a second opinion, regardless of whether you believe them or not. This particular coverage does allow for second opinion pay, where you can go in and say, I, I want someone else to look at me and just give me confirmation of what the first doctor told me I have, what the treatments would be required to get rid of it, and what my options are, right? That's all part of a coverage of this sort, employers. So I want to know, wanted you to know what all these coverages could do for your staff if you decided to offer something like this to them. Blood plasma treatments are so important, guys, because as you're taking chemo and radiation, a lot of times your body starts to fail on you and your blood count is kind of low and you need to have those blood and plasma treatments um, so just make sure that you are aware that when you're dealing with cancer, it is, is not only just hurting the person that's there, but it's also hurt, hurting the families as well. So you, you're thinking about what can you do to help them in preventive care and also. Now, coverages of this sort, all of the carriers that we've seen in the Fortune 500 carriers that offer cancer coverages, most of them all offer a, a piece of segment called wealth benefit, okay? Wealth benefit is from you going to the doctor one time a year and having an annual exam, preventive care. It doesn't mean that you have to actually have cancer. It just means that you're going in for your cancer checkup. Maybe you're having a pap smear done, a colonoscopy done, maybe a prostate exam done. And these coverages will actually pay you one time a year just to have a checkup, okay? So you're talking about, let's say $75 to have a checkup. Some of them pay $100 just to have a checkup one time a year. That's not, like I said, you did not have a diagnosis of cancer. This is only you going in annually to have your checkups as you normally do. 
And while you're there, tell your OBGYN to go ahead and get that screening done for you or tell your colonoscopy physician to get that done for you. Even if you wanna go in and say, hey, I need a prostate exam and that's part of my annual visit, then you can also claim that against this type of coverage right here and they will pay you direct deposit, mind you, if you set up your direct deposit with the company, they will pay you direct deposit just to say that you did have it, put in there the name of the physician, put in there the date of the, uh, the treatment, and then say, okay, and this is their phone number in case you need it. That's it. That's all you need. You do not have to actually provide documentation, paperwork, all this other stuff for your wellness visits. And that's one of the things that I love about this type of coverage is that you're able to get the wellness visits in one time a year and still get paid for it without having a real diagnosis, okay? So let's get back to the post-tax uh, benefits that we we're talking about. Now that includes life insurance and disability coverages. Now when we talk about disability coverages, we're talking about things like short-term disability and possibly long-term disability and group life coverage. Now, remember that we taught in week one what life insurance options are, such as term, versus permanent. And remember, I told you that everything that we learn is going to be a building block, right? A building block to the first one to two weeks. So now we're talking about group life insurance. Now, what is group life insurance? Group life insurance is life insurance that's actually offered to you through your employer. The employer has a contract for a group contract or what they call a master contract, okay? Now let's say that you have 20 employees, just for example, 20 employees. Then you wanna offer them life insurance. Well, that particular carrier that they're working with is gonna give that employer a package deal of life insurance that you can choose from at a deeply discounted rate based off of how many employees they have on staff. So for instance, large companies like Walmart and Costco and things of that nature, right? If they have a lot of employees, right? Then the group life insurance policies tend to be cheaper, 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 right? Because they base it off of the average amount of employees you have on staff, right? That's the benefit of having a group life insurance policy. Now, this is something that you must also keep in mind. OK, I always tell my clients if they have a, a business that they work for or an employer that they work for, by all means, take the group life insurance policy. Make sure that you go ahead and sign up for it because it's pennies on the dollar normally, pennies on the dollar. OK, however, if you ever decide to leave that particular employer, then the life insurance policy can either get mad expensive by itself, okay? Or you can lose it all the way out, okay? So very important that you are aware because the group of life insurance policy is tied to the fact that you are working with that employer, okay? So in most cases, you want to make sure you also have a standalone life insurance policy where if you have a group life insurance policy and the company is contributing to it, or possibly they are, are helping with the cost, great, right? Helping with the cost, great. But if you are thinking, maybe one day I want to retire soon, maybe I don't want to get just be tied to one particular employer, or even I just want to have the ability to have my own coverage in just in case, then you definitely want to have an additional standalone policy. So that's just a little quick insert I wanted to put in there for anyone that is looking at the group life insurance policy, right, to offer to their employees. Really important that they know that they are getting a life policy that's tied to them being there with you <laughs> on your staff, right? And if they ever decide they want to leave, then they want to be thinking of adding on an additional policy standalone where they can have more control over it, okay? Let's talk about this short-term disability, 
okay? Short-term disability insurance. This is another post-tax benefit. And it's usually the one that's asked for a lot, no matter what particular location or what type of business that you're in, they actually ask for short-term disability. Why? Because short-term disability is also known as insurance on your paycheck, okay? Insurance on your paycheck. So insurance on your paycheck basically means that if you are not at your way of working and you're not able to work because the doctor or the physician has pulled you off of working hours, say that you are at home and they need you to be on bed rest, or possibly you're laid up with crutches and, and things of that nature. Okay, if that is the case, then the physician will notate that you need to be out of work for a certain amount of days of recovery. And then once you are able to go back to work, the physician will sign off on you being able to go back to work, right? How does this help you as an employer? Well, as an employer, if they are off work with no pay, it makes it so much harder for them to come back 100%. Now, short-term disability does not pay for your full paycheck. Typically, it pays between 60 to 67% of your payroll, okay? And they base it off of your gross income. So let's just say that you are you know, making $50,000 a year as a gross, okay? and you are out for two, three, three months possibly for rehab of some sort, then what they're gonna do is they're gonna take that $50,000, they're gonna calculate what 66% of that would be on an annual basis, and then they divide that up by the amount of months that you have to be out. That'll give you an idea of how much they would pay you for the time that you are out of work, okay? Now, one thing you wanna also keep in mind, is that when you're dealing with short-term disability and you sign up for it through your employer, in the state of Alabama, you sign up for short-term disability through your employer, okay? Let's put that out there, okay? <laughs> you sign up for your employer. So while you're doing that, keep in mind that you have the ability to choose how fast you want to get paid with that policy. Now, let's stop there for a moment and let's talk a little bit more in detail of what that means. What you wanna look at is what we call elimination periods. If you see here where it says 0777-1414, okay. Employers, you have the ability to let the agent know which particular elimination periods you're willing to offer to your staff, okay? Why is that? Because if you have someone or you have a, a business, let's say a restaurant business, and you want to make sure that they are staying on staff with you, but you still want to offer them short term, but you don't want them just calling out because they, get, they got short term disability, right? Let me tell you how to, how to make sure that doesn't happen. On a 07 elimination period, that first number means sickness, okay? All right? So we want to keep in mind what actually happens when you are out of work for a certain amount of time, okay, for a certain amount of time. So if you are out of work for an accident, then they're like, okay, how many days do I have before this would kick in? Or if I'm out for a sickness, how many days do I have before that would kick in, right? So that's what we're talking about. How many days would it take for it to kick in? So if you chose a 14-14 elimination period for your staff, that means that that short-term disability would not kick in for them until they've been there for 14 days out of work. And then on day 15, it actually kicks in on making their pay, okay? Now, if you have a 7-7 seven, seven elimination, okay? A 7-7 seven, seven elimination means that they have seven days that they have to be out of work congruent days before it kicks in on day eight, all right? Now, you can actually do the fastest payout for the state of Alabama, which is a 07 elimination. And then that actually detects, okay, you can be out of work for a certain amount of days on accident versus sickness, 
but it won't kick in until these elimination periods have passed by. So the 14, 14 days means that 14 days for sickness, 14 days for injury. And that means after the 14 days have passed by, then day 15, it kicks in for them to get paid for the time that they're off of work for short-term disability that is signed off by a physician. Okay, so really important that you know and they know that it must be signed off by a physician or some sort to say, yes, they need to be off of work. Now, maternity leave, I get this question all the time. Short-term disability does cover maternity leave, right? However, you cannot sign up for short-term disability to cover your maternity leave after you're already pregnant. So you have to wait until you actually either had the baby and you wanna use it for other purposes, right? Or you have to sign up for it before you actually conceive in order for it to actually be paid out state law wise, okay? Typically you want to make sure that you uh, have the baby, what, 10 months for the state of Alabama, that you have the baby 10 months or so after the contract has been put in. Why is that? because there's an extra day of 30 days there to help you with that. And then that nine days of, of nine months of the baby being in there and, and, and getting developed and so forth, that gives you a full 10 months of waiting period before maternity leave will actually kick in. So by the time you have that baby, that maternity leave should be kicking in right on time if you actually had the coverage prior to conceiving, right? This is, this is some of the things that, you know, a lot of employers ask about. And I want to make sure that, you know, we had the chance to go into detail of what all that means, right? What all that means. This particular type of policy also has the option of three months payout up to six months payout. That means I'm out of work up to three months. It would pay me for the three months of being out minus the elimination period that we just talked about, okay? Six months of being out minus the elimination period, example 1414 14, that we just talked about, right? So, but as an employer, you have the ability to offer a short-term disability policy to your staff. Let them know that it is there, it's available for them for things like maternity leave, you know, covering times that they're out of, out of the office, possibly out of the restaurant, whatever your business structure is, possibly they're away for pregnancies, whatever it may be. Let's say they have a, a car accident, just like we did, we talked about earlier. This also covers for that. Or one of, one of my favorites that we helped with a couple of years ago is a senior citizen who fell down her stairs at home, Okay fell down her stairs at home and broke her hip. She was still working, okay? But when she broke her hip, she ended up having to have hip replacement. What happened? She tapped into her short-term disability to help with the time that she lost off of work and rehab and all the months that she was away to try to get back to where she needed to be. And the physician did not sign off on her going back to work until he felt that she was confident, comfortable and confident that she could perform her duties. So these are some of the things that we, we're talking about. And does it really make sense for your business to offer some benefits to your staff? So what else do you need to know as an employer? So here are some of the things. It's important to understand the difference between the pre-tax benefits and the post-tax benefits, okay? All right, one of the things that you get as an employer for offering the, the pre-tax benefits is that you're able to get FICA tax breaks, okay? Not only are you keeping the morale high in your business, not only are you keeping your talent staying with you because they're excited that you care enough for them to give them some type of coverage that you don't necessarily have to pay for as an employer. You're just using your tax ID number to actually get the free account with the carrier. It is a free account. It does not cost you anything as an employer to sign up for pre-tax benefits offering for a supplemental 
coverage base. It does not cost you anything. If you get to a carrier that wants to charge you for that, call me. <laughs> you do not have to pay for that, okay? Now, if all of that being said, you can definitely offer those pre-tax benefits to your staff and get those tax breaks as an employer. That's a benefit for you and that you're keeping your, your staff happy or making them even happier to give them something they didn't have before and maybe they needed it, right? Or they have something in the family, family history of cancer or a heart attack stroke and they've been concerned about them one day having that type of ailment, they wanna have some type of coverage, here's an opportunity to make your employees happy with something of this sort, okay? Now, let's just say that it's a post-tax benefit, which is what? The group life insurance that we talked about, okay? The group life insurance. And then we also talked about having short-term disability, right? Short-term disability is also a part of the post-tax. The reason why that is, is because when those funds are dispersed to your employee, you don't want them actually paying double taxes on things and all this other stuff. So. That's why there is a stipulation within the IRS on how things are actually taxed pre-tax versus post-tax. You get the benefit as an employer for offering the pre-tax benefits. Now you can offer them both in one package, okay? And they can choose what they want out of that package, all right, okay? But just note that the pre-tax items that they chose is what's opening the door for you to get those tax breaks as an employer, okay? Post-tax contributions for benefits do not uh, reduce your overall tax burden, but can provide future relief when it's time to utilize the benefit, okay? They may not provide tax breaks on the front end, but on the back end, you're getting a lot of savings, okay? As an employee, you're getting a lot of savings by actually having it come out of your paycheck and pay it that way as a post-tax benefit. So that helps you. So are you qualified as an employer to get this type of coverages for your staff? Like I said earlier, if you missed it, if you have a minimum of three people on your staff, now that three people can include yourself, okay? That third person, let's just say you have two people and you want some coverage for yourself. Well, you, you're definitely a manager or owner. You're part of the business. So you can definitely be one of those three. But make sure that you have a minimum of three people on staff, right? A minimum of three people on staff. And then you are able to offer these benefits to your employees making them happy that they have new benefits. Now they have some coverages that they've been trying to get right. And then guess what? You're keeping the morale high. Oh, I love it. You're keeping the morale high within your business and you're getting tax breaks for offering pre-tax benefits as an employer, okay? So this opens the door for you to get those tax breaks. Now, we do have some challenges. What happens when you are doing an open enrollment? I always like to address the challenges. Sometimes when you are doing an open enrollment, this is your very, very first time ever doing an open enrollment and you're not really sure how to get that together, work with your agent, sit down with them, give them an idea of you know, what type of time frame they have per employee, right, right? You want to make sure that they are aware that they have five minutes with them or 10 minutes with them, or maybe they got to come see you on their break time only, right? Those are the challenges that a lot of businesses have because they don't want to mess up any of their time with people on the floor. What I typically do with my staff is I make sure that we have conditions already agreed upon with the employer of how much time we have per employee to work with them, to ask them questions, to uh, address any medical conditions that they have questions about. All of that is important because you wanna make sure that they get the right coverage for them and that everything is clearly and nothing is, is misunderstood, right? Whether your company is participating in benefits or not, and this is your first time or maybe your renewals, you wanna make sure that the employee get the right coverage with your agent. And if they're not sure if they got the right coverage, then we can also make sure that you work with them outside of regular timeframes, right? 
Was this information helpful for you? I see we have some questions out here too, Torin, that's coming in. Are you looking to offer benefits to your staff with a trusted Fortune 500 carrier, with a track record of paying claims? All that is vitally important. Do you have a minimum of three people under your tax ID number to even qualify? So that's, that's important. Got to make sure that you have at least three people on your a roster under your tax ID number to qualify. And you as an owner can be one of those three people, right? Are you considering offering, but have additional questions? So if you have additional questions and you, I see we have some questions here, we will look at those as well, but you can also designate some time with us to talk more in detail about your business structure and what you're hoping to do. And I see, I'm going to turn this over to you, Torin. Are you there with me, girl? I am here. This was so good. Um, if we can stop the share, that would be great uh, because I know everyone has popped in with us on their lunch hour. And I'm so glad that they did. Um, I This was amazing information. I did check the chat and uh, we were just hearing, this is great. This is great. I didn't actually see a question. So if I overlooked it to any of you, I'm so sorry. But again, thank you so much for joining us. Um, this information was on point. Like I started, if you just now are uh, jumping in, Demetrius has been with us all month long. So go back and not only make sure you uh, take notes and you you pull and get everything that she gave us today, but also go back from April the 1st until now, every Thursday, and look at those videos. Also, you want to go and look at the videos from our Sunday. We call it a sip and soar, and we've had Ms. Delmar Johnson uh, going over all things HR, so this just fell right in line, and it was perfect. Again, we are about teaching you how to fish, so you know it's, it's what you know right? It's what you know. And so our goal is to make sure that you don't get left behind and that you know everything and you really understand it. So guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Demetrius. And again, if you have not, I need you to go to www.igniteal.org and register for the Doing Business in Alabama Minority Business Training Pilot Project today. Day. This, what you just sat <laughs> in on, this is doing business in Alabama at its best. This yes. is what it's about. We are committed to you. And if you put the work in, if you work it, I promise you, you will totally win. But you do have to do the work. You do have to show up. I learned something today. I didn't know that you literally only need three employees in order to be able to give those benefits. I mean, this is just amazing. So yes. guys, make sure you stay connected, make sure you turn your notifications on so that when we go live, you know that there is something that is destiny shaking and uh, wealth building strategies are being dropped every day, all day, because this is what we do. Hey, Mr. Rodney Ford, I see one of my board members peeping in. So great to see you, um, that you joined us today. And to everyone else, I saw Miss Julia uh, Elmore, I'm so glad you joined us. Lionel Boone, I'm so glad you joined us. Dino, Dino, I like that. That's cute. Dino, Dino, I'm so glad you joined us. Kizzy Williams, yes, girl, this was great information, and I'm glad you were here with us today. Michelle Melton, so glad that you watched us. Christopher, our CPA was on. Look at Christopher Smith, Taylor CPA and Associates. Yes, they rocking it. These are Black-owned firms. Y'all, are y'all watching? This? Are you seeing? I want it's important to me that we put people before you that are exactly where you either are or where you want to go. Because if you can't see it, then you can never even begin to think you can have it. So everything that we do is intentional. It is intentional. Justine Taylor was with us. Um, Sharon Anderson. Hey, Sharon. Oh my goodness, Chris, Chris Studemeyer. Oh my God. She's like, I am so excited, girl. I am too. We are just, look, we're doing it. Oh, and Kimberly Chapman from the Birmingham Business Crossplex 
five points. So I'm gonna mess their name up, but we have to get it right and put some respect on it. It is the Five Points West Crossplex Business Alliance. Have y'all heard? They called Ignite and they asked us to come over there and to help everybody in this western side of town do business in Alabama effectively and competitively. So we put together no business left behind and we mean no business left behind. But again, you've got to go to www.igniteal.org and register for this free program. So you guys have an amazing day. Get back uh, to your Thursday. And oh, up, up, up. It looks like Miss Demetrius has something that she wants to say. And um, when she gets finished, we're going to log off. So y'all know what I'm going to say. It's time for us to win on purpose. Go ahead, Demetrius. Now, Tori, I just had to add this i had to add this right so when we were talking about all these benefits right people are guessing what will it cost for all of this here's the bombshell average beginning cost of four dollars a week to possibly ten dollars a week for individual coverage for everything that we just talked about oh wow oh, so wow. that's the bombshell i wanted to drop at the end and say hey don't tell me that you are not in a position to put $4 on your critical care policy or $6 on your accident coverage or $7 on that cancer coverage for your family, you and your family. And a lot of those coverages cover children for free. Employers, hey, you have the opportunity to not only get those tax breaks, but take care of your people. That's all I have. I love it. And we are going to continue this conversation. Delmar Johnson will be with us this upcoming Sunday for our Sip and Sort at 6 o'clock p.m. Y'all know how we do it. And Ms. Demetrius will be with us again next Thursday. So listen, y'all, we are winning on purpose. Y'all have an amazing, amazing day. And turn those notifications on so that you can get alerted and you jump on and make sure if nothing else, even if you can't listen at that moment, jump on and share it. So other friends and Facebook friends and family members and colleagues that are on Facebook at that time, they can hear the information. That's how you help us, helping us make sure that nobody is left behind. It's time, y'all. Let's save ourselves. All right. So I'll talk to y'all later and be remember, win on purpose. Bye.